Hey guys, so here's a free lesson on solving quadratics using specifically the square root property. So we're going to look at solving things that look like this. So as a reminder, the way these videos work, you want to pause and try the examples when you're prompted and there are always free guided notes available. And if you could just do me a solid and like my videos or comment with feedback or maybe subscribe or share this channel with somebody if you know that they're also in a similar class as you, that would really help. I am trying to provide as much free math help on the internet as possible. Okay. So let's start by talking about the square root property. Um, so just think about this in, for a second, pause the video if you need to. What are the solutions to x squared equals 25? What would make this work? Well, most people think of x equals five, but there's also another one if you square it. x equals negative five would also work, right? So if I take negative five, that's a terrible looking five. Uh, okay, negative five and I square it, so that's negative 5 times negative 5, so that will indeed equal positive 25, right? So we have this positive and negative solution that is possible for, uh, that is possible as a solution. I can't speak. This kind of illustrates what the square root property is. So let me show you. So the square root property, so let Q be an expression and K a constant. So if you want to solve something like this, you're actually going to take the square root, but you have to take plus or minus that square root. That's kind of the idea behind this. And so notice Q can actually be an expression. This can stand for something larger, but this has to actually be a number ideally. So let's go ahead and play around with this. So here's something now kind of similar to what we were just talking about, but now I'm going to use the square root property to solve this. So if I take the square root of each side, so in doing that, I have to write plus or minus here. So then what I get actually is two possibilities. So you might think this is just plus or minus five, but notice I can actually complete this problem since this is a whole number. So we'll talk about situations where you can kind of simplify this um, farther versus situations where you can't. So in this case, I'm actually gonna break this into two cases and I have the case where x plus three equals five and then I have the other case where x plus three equals negative five. And so then I can subtract off the three in both cases. So in this case, I'll get x equals two or x equals negative eight. So there's the idea. So why don't you go ahead and give this one a try and hit play when you're ready. Okay, so same thing, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and take the square root of each side, do plus or minus. And so now I've got x minus five, this will equal seven, or x minus five equals negative seven. So now I can just finish this. So I'll just add five here, so I get x equals 12, or if I add five here, add five plus five, this will be x equals negative two. So there are my two solutions. All right, so now let's start taking a look at maybe more complicated cases. This is kind of the basics. So first and foremost, um, when I brought up that property, it was not for a problem that looks like this. So let's look at the property one more time. This specifically says that the thing that's being squared, that has to be isolated on one side. So if you look at this problem, here's my squared thing and then plus three. So that doesn't work. So then we have to obviously modify this, and so you could do that just by subtracting the three. Now, when I do that, I get two x plus one squared equals 25. And if you wanna pause the video to finish, go for it. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the square root of each side, and now I'll just solve as usual. So I'm gonna have two x plus one equals positive five, and two x plus one equals negative five. So let's see, I'll go ahead and subtract one from all sides. So I get either two X equals four, or I get that two X equals negative six. And then I can divide everything by two. So my two solutions here are X equals two or X equals negative three. Okay, cool. So you might want to pause the video and, and give these two a try. These actually do have a little bit of a plot twist. I highly recommend that you try them and think about them and then hit play. 
So we're going to start this the same way. So I take the square root of each side. But you'll notice now when I do this, so now I get x plus 3 equals, well, we can't actually, the 12 is not a perfect square, right? So what can we do about this? Well, this actually requires that you know something now about square roots. So you have to simplify this square root. So if you are not familiar with that, I will put a uh, link to a video in the comments of just how to actually do that. So this will simplify then as, so for 12, the, the largest perfect square that goes into 12 is 4. And so this will ultimately equal plus or minus 2 times the square root of 3. So now in this case, I really can't do a whole lot. It's not like this is going to be two whole numbers. So I can subtract 3. And, and now this actually will come down to preference of your instructor. So if you're one of my students, I'm actually fine with you just leaving it like this. But, oops, as I whack the screen here. Um, but, so the, the homework system that we use in my class will not let you put this in, unfortunately. I know this is kind of annoying, but you're, you're going to have to actually break this up. And some instructors actually want to see the two solutions. So the, the other way that you would have to represent this then would be negative 3 plus 2 times the square root of 3, and x equals negative 3 minus 2 times the square root of 3. So it just kind of depends. Like I said, if you're taking a test in my class, this is totally fine. But like our homework system will probably make you do this. So just a heads up. OK, so same thing here, right? So I go ahead and I take the square root of each side. And this is going to be plus or minus. So this becomes 4x minus 1 equals plus or minus. So now I've got to evaluate the square root of negative 50. And this will require us to use imaginary numbers. So this might be something that you've covered in your class or not. Um, so you can always skip over this if you haven't done this. In, in my class, we have talked about this. Um, so to evaluate this, I'll, I'll also drop a link just to how to work with imaginary numbers um, also in the, the comments. So to break that down, so maybe I'll just do it over here. So the square root of negative 50. So now I'm going to have the square root of 25 times the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 2. So this becomes 5i times the square root of 2. So this will be 4x minus 1 equals plus or minus 5i times the square root of 2. So now I can go through and solve for x. So I'll get that 4x equals 1 plus or minus 5i times the square root of 2. And then I'll divide all of this by 4. Oops, not 2, 4. So I ultimately get x equals 1 over 4 plus or minus 5i times the square root of 2 over 4. And so once again, um, if you, it depends on kind of your class. In, in On a test f for our situation, if you're one of my students, this is fine. But Connect Math um, or our homework system will make you actually break this up into the plus case and the minus case. So I know that that kind of sucks, but what can you do? All right. So that's kind of the gist of it. Um, if you want to try some more examples, I have three more here just to give you extra practice. If not, maybe consider giving this video a like, pretty please, um, and hit play when you're ready. OK, so first I've got to get this by itself. So I'll go ahead and I'll subtract the 5. So I get 5x minus 2 squared. This will equal now 24. Now I can take the square root of each side. And so I'll get uh, 5x minus 2 equals plus or minus. So the square root of 24, so I'll just jump to what that simplifies to. So this will be 2 times the square root of 6. So now if I start solving for this, so I add 2 to each side. So now I've got 5x equals 2 plus or minus 2 times the square root of 6. And then I'll divide everything by 5. So I get x equals 2 over 5 plus or minus 2 square root of 6 over 5. And again, modify that to your needs. OK, so for this one, so first I've got to add 1 to each side. So now I've got 3x plus 1 squared equals negative 49. So now I'll take the square root of each side. And so now I get 3x plus 1 equals plus or minus 
7i. So now I'll just show you how to finish this. And so there's the rest of the solution when I solve for x. And here's the last one. So first I need to subtract off the 4. So now I've got 6x plus 7 squared equals negative 45. So now I'll go ahead and I'll take the square root of each side. So I get 6x plus 7 equals, so this will be a um, imaginary number again, so this will come out to plus or minus, sorry, plus or minus 3i times the square root of 5. And so now I can finish solving this. Okay, and one final note on this. So this 3 over 6 can actually be simplified one step farther. So when that happens, you do want to actually simplify. So this will be negative 7 over 6 plus or minus. Um, I could really write this as just the square root of 5 over 6, maybe times i. That would be maybe another way you could represent that. Oh, sorry, not 3. Mm, sorry. This is 3 over 6 is equal to 1 half. So I can just get rid of the, the 1 entirely and just put this over 2. So that's the other way you can do that. Um, so that will cover it for the square root property. So thanks for watching, guys. And I have a bunch of other videos on just how to solve quadratics. So I hope to catch you in the other ones. See ya.